They had one job. Ugh. I never sought your death's farm. Yet you have left me no choice. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 video game heroes who made things worse. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at video game protagonists who were just trying to save the day or achieve some larger goal, but unfortunately their ambitions, whether for the greater good or their own selfish desires, ultimately brought about more harm, chaos, and damage than anything else. Be warned though, there are some heavy spoilers inbound. <laughs> Number 10, Link, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. While Link did save Hyrule from the clutches of Ganon, let's not forget that one major oopsie that our green-clad adventurer made along the way. To stop Ganondorf, Link had to travel across the vast land of Hyrule in search of three spiritual stones. These stones were the keys required to open the passageway found within the Temple of Time in order to obtain the Sword of Evil's Bane, the Master Sword. mission accomplished, but opening that door also gave Ganondorf the opportunity to enter the Sacred Realm, thus giving him enough power to devastate the once peaceful land of Hyrule and transform it into a harsh wasteland full of darkness and despair. Nice going, Hero of Time. <laughs> Number 9. Near, Near. We need help! Please, anyone! Help! Help us! Our main hero, Near, embarks on a big adventure to save the world. It's a tried and true formula, but this game throws a curveball that not even he saw coming. All Nier wanted to do was find a cure for the illness called the Black Scrawl. But by the end, when he defeats the evil Shadow Lord, he sets in motion a horrifying chain of events. Killing the Shadow Lord, along with the other decisions made in the game, essentially wiped out all of humanity, rendering that cure pretty pointless. <laughs> We can cut near some slack here, as he couldn't have predicted such a cataclysmic outcome for his actions. But hey, he still messed up big. Congrats, Nier. You unleashed Armageddon. Achievement unlocked. Dad. Stop. Please. Number 8. Sergeant Rico Velazquez. Killzone 2. Listening to this shit makes me want to break something. Ever the diplomat, Rico. Already established in the first game was the violent tension between the Vecton and Hellgast populations, and the second installment only ramped up the hostilities between the groups tenfold. The Vecton armies launch an all out assault on the Helgen homeworld in order to bring an end to the fighting, and for the most part, the infiltration was successful. You will not break them! No! However, when the tyrannical Helgen leader, Emperor Vasari, is about to be arrested, the shoot first ask questions later soldier named Rico kills Vasari in a fit of rage, only escalating the already bitter relationship between the two factions. Nice going, bud. Hellgas ships! I thought first wave took them all out. Number seven, Jack, Bioshock. You can hold on and everything will be fine. The character you control throughout this atmospheric shooter isn't quite as heroic as you'd expect. Over the course of the game, Jack fights his way through the dangerous underwater city of Rapture, all the way to the founder of the sunken city, Andrew Ryan. Did that airplane crash, or was it hijacked? At this point, Jack is at his wit's end with Mr. Ryan, but before anything can happen, the game reveals a major twist. It turns out that this entire time, Jack is actually a mind-controlled puppet, and every decision made during the game hasn't been his own. He was under the influence of Frank Fontaine, who used Jack to do his dirty work, in order to ensure that the City of Rapture would fall into his ownership. Oh, Number 6, James Sunderland, Silent Hill 2. Could you really be in this town? The town of Silent Hill is meant to embody an individual's own personal hell, with nearly everything inside the world representing all of the fear and regret that a person feels within the dark recesses of their mind. Taking that into consideration, James Sunderland has done some dastardly deeds in his lifetime, leaving him with more emotional and psychological scars than any one person should carry around. Silent Hill reminds him of his tragic past around every turn, with each creepy monster or twisted scenario being symbolic of his own horrendous actions. However, it's James's choice to continue to venture further into this dilapidated hellscape. So, the farther he goes, the deeper into his own subconscious he will dive. Must be a masochist. That's why I needed you. I needed someone to punish me for my sins. Number 5. Frank Woods and Alex Mason. Call of Duty Black Ops 2. What? 
Damn, Woods! It's already bad enough that Mason is considered fit for active duty since, you know, he was brainwashed by the Russians to kill JFK in the first Black Ops game, but Woods' actions were inexcusable despite his motive. During a heated struggle, quite literally, Woods and Mason infiltrate the Menendez estate and cross paths with a young man named Raul, who rushes to the protection of his sister Josefina. Next time I saw Menendez, I lost my shit! What the f would you do?! Things get out of hand when Woods tosses a grenade into the room where Josefina is. Witnessing his sister's death at such close proximity fueled Raul's quest for revenge, resulting in the deaths of millions later on. But hey, Woods and Mason aren't the bad guys, right? But we did in Nicaragua. That's an accident. We don't target civilians. Number four, Captain Martin Walker, Spec Ops The Line. Step lively, people. We're about to bring this city to its knees. In the ruins of Dubai that make up most of this game's world, humility and kindness are hard things to come by. Amidst all the madness and bloodshed, Captain Martin Walker at least realizes the nastiness of everything around him and makes the attempt to be a better person. I not have a choice, Lugo. There's always a choice. No, there's really not. Well, easier said than done. By the end of the game, Walker has honestly done much more harm than good. He ruthlessly murders several American soldiers, launches white phosphorus that kills both enemies and innocent civilians alike, and the real kicker is when he destroys the water supply for Dubai, basically dooming the entire city's population. Captain Walker really should get a habit of practicing what he preaches. Walker! 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 Ah! Number three, Gordon Freeman, Half-Life series. Morning, Mr. Freeman. Looks like you're running late. Yes, fighting off a deadly alien invasion force is sure to bring about some undesirable collateral damage and consequences. However, we haven't forgotten that it was Gordon Freeman himself who played a helping hand in opening the portal that unleashes said aliens into our world in the first place. Stage one emitters in three, two, one. Technological advancements and expanding our minds in the wonderful world of sciencey science is great and all, but as a leading member of his research division, you'd think that maybe Freeman would have spoken up once and suggested that trying to open portals to make contact with extraterrestrial beings wasn't the greatest idea? Why exactly does everyone in Half-Life 2 regard him as their savior again? Never fear, Gordon. She's de-beaked and completely harmless. Number two, Kratos, God of War 3. Kratos' quest for revenge has caused a couple of casualties over the years. However, we feel his exploits in God of War 3 easily takes the cake in comparison to all other horrific deeds he has committed because this time he sort of, you know, broke the world. By the end of the game, Kratos has brutally murdered nearly every god and titan that crosses his path, has left the entirety of Olympus in bloody broken shambles, and his actions bring about a cataclysmic apocalypse, since offing each respective god only plunged the world further into a state of chaos. Today you may defeat me. But in the end, Kratos, in the end, you'll betray only yourself. But it's okay, we're supposed to forgive him for his genocidal ways in the next game, because he has a son now. My vengeance ends now. Before we reveal our number one screw-up, here are a few honorable mentions. Flippy, get back here! I need to run. <laughs> Number one, Wander, Shadow of the Colossus. Do you see those ginormous colossi roaming around within this vast, sprawling game world? Well, as monstrous as some of them may appear, they are not the real monsters here. That antagonistic title can be reserved for the lone wanderer that the player controls. The entirety of the game revolves around Wander tracking down and killing 16 giant colossi, because in doing so, he may restore the life of a young village girl he loves named Mono. Hey man, we get it, love makes us do crazy things, but going around murdering innocent creatures for your own selfish ambitions just ain't cool. Not to mention that killing the colossi broke the mystical seal that holds back an ancient demonic entity, but <laughs> oh well. Fantastic work there, buddy. Fantastic work. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.